Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to today's video, which is a book review on the literary journey books for summer. So these were three books all set in a summery setting I thought would be great reads for the summer. The way my book reviews work, one star, did not like the book, probably didn't even finish reading it two stars in, the book was okay. Three stars, good book, I liked it. Four stars, loved the book. And five stars are those books that just blow my mind and I want everyone to read them. Now we're gonna talk about these books. Guys, this was not a good book review um, round for me. I I'm, was actually really disappointed in the three books I'm about to talk to you about. But as always, I know some of you out there may very well like these books. So I'll try to kind of caveat what I didn't like so you can determine if they're still for you because I thought a lot of them had fun plots. So I'm gonna start lowest to highest. Um, the Whole Tell Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand was a one-star read for me. I, I didn't even finish reading it. So this book had a really interesting concept. We are set out on the island in Nantucket in the summer, and we have a combination of residents and non-residents that are the main characters of the story. There is a really old, dilapidated hotel. It has a tremendous amount of history on the island. Um, and we're going to have a non-resident, some a billionaire who comes in, purchases the hotel, has this vision, and wants to basically bring this amazing place to life. He is going to hire, as the general manager of the hotel, a local. Um, and we're going to learn a little bit about her and her situation, but she is re recently separated from her boyfriend, fiance, or husband. I don't remember which. Um, and she's going to take over that role. And their target is to really engage this Instagrammer, this woman who is phenomenally well known for her hotel reviews on Instagram and to really try to get a high rating from her, hoping it'll obviously bring people to this hotel. One of the other main characters is a ghost. And I was like so intrigued by this. I'm like, okay, this is cool because the hotel does have um, quite a bit of a history and there was a fire in which a 19 year old servant in the hotel had died or a chambermaid. Um, I can't remember if she was a guest of the hotel. I think she was with her um, employer. Uh, she's gonna die in the fire and therefore she will be the ghost. When I heard this concept, I'm like, okay, this sounds so great. This is gonna be a fun, light, easy read. Right out the gate, guys, I found it so incredibly cheesy and so superficial. I, I just, I wasn't connecting with any of the characters. As soon as the plot started to unfold, I felt like it was so cliche, so typical, and so obvious. And I, this was my, I mean, I think in particular because this whole book journey hadn't been strong, I just had zero tolerance. I'm like, I can't go through another poor reading experience. There's too many books waiting out there for me to read. So I just decided to DNF it. So there it is. Um, just to give you an example of one of the things that really bugged me, you know, we have a maid that a ghost, <laughs> a chambermaid, that's from like the 19, no, wait, when was she from? The 1900s, quite a while ago. And she literally says at one point, sorry, not sorry, which is a phrase that originated in the 2000s. Now, I get from the little bit I read that she is picking up on traits from the kids that were partying in the hotel. But I felt like it was done to such an extreme that you really kind of lost the cool historical element that she as a character could have brought into the book. And that is just one example. Like I read it, there, there really wasn't a way that that was introduced. At that point, I didn't even know that she could hear the kids that were partying, that she would start to change her behaviors and do things. Enough context to help me understand why the chambermaid was saying, sorry, not sorry. So I, I, it just felt false. It felt very off and false, and it, it just drove me crazy. So this was not a book for me, for sure. Barely read. <laughs> so I have been mentioning this before. I am hoping to get my Macari shop up and running. All three books you're about to see will definitely be in there. I'm trying not to hoard and keep books anymore, unless they're like my absolute faves that I know I want to reread. Okay, so let's talk about the next one. Okay, the second book was by the same author. That was Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrand. I'm, I don't know, maybe her writing style just isn't for me. This, I ended up landing on two stars for this book, so this was very much an ad kind of book. I did read the whole book, but I have to say I did skim read really fast through the ending um, just, just to get over it. Um, so what is this book about? We are going to meet the Levin family. 
they go to the grandmother's house um, every summer on Nantucket to spend the summer. So we're going to have multiple children that are a part of this family. So Blair is the oldest. She has married. Um, she has been stranded. <laughs> Essentially, she's originally stranded with her husband outside of Nantucket, but she's going to get there. And um, she is pregnant with twins. Then after that, we're going to meet the next daughter. Um, Blair is in her 20s. Kirby, the next daughter, I believe is also like 21 in her 20, um, early 20s. And she is more like the, the rebel child. She's very much into the civil movement, a lot of stuff that were going on at this time. Um, she is going to be like their wild child, essentially, but very passionate, very full of life. Um, their son, Tiger, was just um, drafted and has been sent over to Vietnam in the Vietnam War. Um, I believe he is like 18 or 19. Um, he is pretty, I mean, he just kind of hit that age. The one that I'm going to say the main characters that we really get to know is the 13-year-old. She starts out as 12 but turns 13 in the book named Jessie. So the youngest child of her siblings. And then we're going to really get to know mom, whose name is Kate. Um, she is currently married, but this is her second marriage. She, her husband will kind of make an appearance in the book. And then, well, a, an appearance in the book is going to be the grandmother um, who owns the house in which the family is visiting. There, let me see. Let's, where to start? Okay. First of all, I had a hard time with the characters. Um, they weren't likable, which in and of itself, I have read and loved many books in which I hated the characters. So that doesn't really do it for you know, it's not like, oh, I didn't like the character, so I don't like the book. It was more that they weren't likable, and there was no real depth to the characters that helped me appreciate them. I mean, it, they were very superficial. You don't really get into their points of view. It's more of a told. Um, it's cool because she, the author does write with alternative points of view, so you'll hear you know, Kate's the mom's experience, the one of the siblings experience, but not with depth. So you really get to see how they experience each other, which would have been awesome. Um, but it was more just like, they'll tell you, you know, oh, Blair's a pain in the butt, but you don't really get to see her sister experiencing her as a pain in the butt. And that is an important distinction that I think really brings that quality to the reading experience. That's what I felt like was missing so much is I didn't get to experience the the characters and the events in the book, it was very direct just being told what's happening. And that quality for me just really watered things down. Um, the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting with this book, and this may be intentional, I'm not super familiar with this author's writing style, but we never really got any of the male characters' points of view. And I, I was kind of bummed about that. Um, you know, we're really gonna get into mom's point of view and the three daughters, but Tiger, who's off at the Vietnam War, we're gonna get a little bit of his voice through letters, but I just felt like, God, this was such a huge opportunity to have these very distinctly alternative perspectives since the book was multiple perspectives from the stepfather, from the, um, the brother, and kind of hear how they experience the family and are experiencing the key events of this year. Um, so that to me also, again, this that just may be the writer's normal style. She may prefer writing from female points of view, which is fine. But I found it curious um, and not knowing her style that well. Um, the other thing that I did actually really like about the book, though, was you really did get a feel. I, I, I had to do more of it in my imagination um, than what was read. But really thinking about, wow, what it must have been like for parents and families at this time to have their sons, their brothers drafted um, into a major war in the Vietnam War. I, that was something I don't think I'd fully thought about or reflected on before. And this book did really kind of bring that to my awareness. And that was probably my favorite thing about reading this book um, was kind of that lens into it. Other than that, um, yeah, I think that was it. It just overall, this wasn't a strong read for me. But this will be another one you can find on Macari. And once I get my site up, I will start popping in the links below in the description. So keep an eye out for those. Let's go on to the final book. Okay, final book, three stars for me. And that was One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. So this was a good book. I'm going to tell you, 
did not start out liking this book, but I found it very fun, very whimsical, and it does have an aspect of magical realism to it. Um, this book is essentially about um, a, the main character, our protagonist, is a woman who is extremely close to her mother. I'm going to say that because it was actually kind of a ugh, pain point for me. I'll go into more detail on that. But there's a little bit of a meshment, in my opinion, going on here. But they have a very close relationship, which is a beautiful thing. But she is going to lose her mother to cancer in the beginning of this book. Her and her mother had planned this trip to Italy to sort of relive her mom's experience when she was solo traveling on this one particular summer. They were supposed to redo that trip. Um, so our main character is going to decide to go ahead and take the trip. And while there, and this is where the magical realism part comes in that I thought was really cool, her mother's going to appear as her 20-some-year-old self. And um, they're going to basically have the ability to interact and develop a friendship, and then we're going to see things kind of evolve from there. And it's going to give her not just a way to work through her grief about the loss of her mother, but also the way to understand her mother with a little bit more depth and a little bit more complexity you know, than she had growing up with her through the single experience of her mother as her mother at a particular age, right? So I have to say the very beginning, guys, I, I did not like this book. Um, it was definitely one or two stars. I didn't feel like things were fully developed. I felt like uh, it was just, like there were things that just felt forced, almost too perfectly put into place just to kind of make the plot be what it was. And then there were things that bothered me. Like at one point, she mentions buying a lemonade from a lemonade stand and sucking on the ice cubes. And I, I wanted to ask you all, because I've, I've been to Italy once, but the thing I remember about Europe was no ice. <laughs> like that was, I'm a huge ice person. And my understanding is like, they generally don't do ice unless you go to like a McDonald's in Europe. So that really floored me when I was like, whoa, wait, she, ice cubes in a lemonade? <laughs> like that happens? Happy to be wrong, but do let me know below if that's actually a thing. Maybe they only have ice at lemonade stands. The town itself, one of the other things I did really like about this book, the hotel, is an actual hotel that the book is set in and the town itself exists. So it was really fun. I got on Google. I'm looking it up, reading a little bit about the history. It sounds like a beautiful place. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. As I moved through the book, um, I did start to, things kind of came together. Some of the things that seemed a little forced um, and just like too simplistic did lend into a really interesting fun plot. So this I would recommend to, to some of you for a fun summer read. You can read it in one to two days. It's a thin book. Um, just read it for the whimsical nature of it and the fun and for the beautiful setting. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a good read. Um, that's all it's going to be. Okay, so three stars, one Italian summer. Again, this one will be added to my Mercari shop. I'm really trying, guys, to get that thing up and running. Um, so hopefully here from when I post this video, you'll see it up within a couple weeks. Um, so that is it for today's videos. As always, I love your thoughts, even if you completely disagree with my reviews. I always love to hear how people experience the books and what you thought. And other than that, let me know what your favorite summer reads were too. That could get me on. Maybe I can get my list going for next year. All right, so let's, let's go read some books. Happy reading.